Jesse, how are you doing? Hi, is this Chris? It is. You're Hi, how's it going? It's amazing. Tell me about your Fantastic. business and your question. Okay. Um, you know what? It's it's actually not my business. I just uh, took the role as head of brand and design for a footwear company. For a what and kind of company? Perplexing for a footwear company. So like shoes? Yep. Okay. So my I have about 15 years in footwear, and this is a total stump to me because it's 100% manufactured and sold in the USA. This company started back in the 70s. It's family-owned, and they've, Chris, I've never seen brand loyalty like this in my life, with from Coke to but nothing. Um, people come in, they sit down, they say, I want this, the same thing they have on their foot, and they buy the same one. My job as that customer is kind of, let's just say, went into the grave, literally, is to revamp, rebrand, and, you know, start this over again, either come up with a new brand or refresh this one. The problem is we're packed to the gills with inventory, and they've never had a sale, refused to have a sale, and don't want to sell internationally, and our prices are through the roof. So it's a little bit of a stump. What is the I mean, price point? About eight. Uh, a sneaker, let's say like just a sneaker starts at about 180 because it's, you know, all U.S. leather, U.S. made. It, it's really tough. And um, they've set a challenge to me to get them into the running market and things like that. And man, it's uh, not only is USA made, uh, I'll be honest, it's a little trickier. We don't have all the tools at our fingertips. But it's also an uphill battle with marketing here. I'm just not sure people care if it's made in the U.S. or not if it comes to price and performance. Well, that's okay. So it's sneakers. What other kind of shoes are you selling? Uh, casual, comfort, dress, sandals, uh, pretty much everything but rain boots or military boots. What's your it's number everything. one selling shoe? Number one is comfort category. Comfort. But for now, it's become more of an elderly shoe. I mean, we're talking like twin Velcro to bungee <laughs> lace up. I and mean, these have really supported that older customer. Like, is it covered under Medicare? Some are, yeah. And we've, we've, uh, we've sort of tapped that market. Um, we've expanded into doing some military projects and things like that, which are helping because you know, another job is keeping these people employed in these factories. So we're, um, we're doing a great job bringing in other brands, but it's not as lucrative as it once was. Uh, we have um, just over 100 stores. We sell to over 200 stores. So your, your uh, revenue is declining? Revenues in the last five years is 50%. And, and so, probably over the last 20 years, it's 10% of that. And we're just under the $200 million mark. Okay. okay, so you're selling sneakers, you're selling dress shoes, and you're selling comfort shoes. So why does Nike not sell comfort shoes and dress shoes, do you think? Um, well, they, they know... Yeah, I definitely see what you're getting at. They know, they know their role, and they, they didn't start with their own stores, right? Uh, I guess we all know the story of, of Phil Knight, um, where this this company... Well, let's just talk about the psychology, the, internet, they, the psychology of a buyer, right? So right. You, you don't... Just psychologically, you want tennis shoes that are performance-based. They're going to make you faster, you know, support your foot in a basketball game or, you know, whatever it is, but tennis shoes are for gotcha. performance, right? Then you go to dress shoes. Those are for looks and they're not so much for performance. They're actually less comfortable, but they're for a look. Right. And then you have the comfort, but you have, you're serving three different demographics and they're well, all I guess three different very buyers. Well is comfort. We hope that the same demographic comes in and we give them something that we're much wider. There's a lot more toe box space. It, it's a total comfort brand. 
I mean, we're definitely not performance. We wouldn't compete with anyone else. And Chris, if I was to show you our dress shoes, you know, they're not walking down a runway anytime soon. They're, they're much you know, roomier, let's say, for, you know, potential foot issues, things like that. So they, they've stayed in their lane somewhat in the comfort area, but I do see what you're saying, that they have branched out in different, you know, categories of footwear. Okay, so let me, let me ask you another question. How is Adidas catching Nike right now? What are they doing strategically? I would say faster than the market, and they're implementing some very, very, very fantastic. I mean, their marketing stories are beyond. I mean, I, I just think they're doing a phenomenal job, and their product has always been better. I just think they're doing a better story or a better um, job with the story. But isn't it driven by celebrities? Like, isn't it Kanye, Yoshi, Yamamoto, well, Rick, Rick Owens? Like, yep. yeah, I think they're doing a great job with that. Yep. Could they have done it without think, without uh, that? How would they have done it? No, could they? Because um, I don't think they could have. No, I don't. You're, you're right, and I, I think companies like Nike, you know, having worked at a few of these big brands, um, we always watched the Under Armors and things like that, and looked at some of the research done behind the scenes by these bigger brands, and they sort of sat back and watched and said, "Let them get one Tiger Woods mishap, where you know celebrities go off the rails, and their brand is over." So, you know, harnessing somebody like Kanye, I wouldn't say it was um, a loss by Nike to lose it, although it looks like it. You never know what he's going to do next. It could just fail. So it's a little bit tricky with those kinds of things. I mean, Wait, do they have to give Walmart. back the billions of dollars they've made off of Yeezys? If Yeezy ends tomorrow, do they have to give back the billions that they've made in the last four or five years? No. No, it's more of what was what would be future projections. I mean, the, the, the Tiger thing was pretty tough, and I think that's what put a bad taste in Nike's mouth. I'm all for but it. I Jordan, mean, I I'm Jordan didn't it. go down. They had Jordan. He, he was reasonably well behaved prior to. <laughs> no, but Jordan <laughs> transparency. Air Jordan sold sold very well during all that. So right, not you know Tiger, yeah, but right. that wasn't that wasn't their sales. That was just a part of it. Right. And so what, right. that hurt their golf division more than anything, right? Because they stopped making clubs and all mm-hmm. that. Which, right. which was, that, to my point more, too, was I don't know that they needed to get into golf. I, didn't, I don't know that they needed to get into golf clubs. I didn't, I didn't think that that was a natural extension of shoes. Like, you're always better. So then back, back to your, your question. So who would be, if we took the comfort part of the business and we were going to have a celebrity endorse it mm-hmm. who would the celebrity be that's the the perfect model for that older clientele who would the celebrity be well so the older clientele i'll be honest is 70 plus and they they're simply just not i mean that's why they're the company's bringing in guys like me and I'm on the phone with you. I mean, these are the kind of options we look at, right? So Tom Jones, um, Tom Jones, Betty white. Okay. Um, so you know, what's wrong like with that? that? To speak to, um, we, I mean, we've reached out. These are things that we're, we're, we're going down the path. It, it's, I guess it's, uh, um, the duality of keeping what's left of the business moving, right. And selling without doing something too fresh. Cause I would love to come in and say, gut the stores, revamp, rebrand, start over, but not exactly. I don't know. I was just trying to get your thoughts. I mean, a couple of things you said, it really sparks some interest. I mean, I, I do well, like where your head's at. I'm the like, second thing I'm going to say is it's a design driven industry right now. Everything is high design. Like it's right. unbelievable. Some of these sneakers, like I was in a Y3 and I'm a huge Yoshi Yakamoto fan. I buy his clothes. I'm a huge Y3 fan, which is his collaboration with Adidas and I'm in the new Y3 store here in LA and I I'm looking at these shoes and I tell the, the manager in the store who, you know, they, I used to go to the Y3 in Miami all the time. So they know me and they, they would send me like, Hey, here's a new catalog. Tell us what you want. Cause I buy that much of it. And he, he mm-hmm. says to me here in the store here, he moved out from Miami, kind of knew who I was. I said, hey, these look like I could run really fast in these. Like I'd, you know, and add some speed to me. And he goes, those aren't sneakers. And I'm like, no, they are sneakers. And he goes into something that, no, they're not for running. They're, they're something sneakers, which means something of there for looks, but there's no, they're all show, no go, basically. 
I forget gotcha. what what he said, but it's it's so over <laughs> it's so so over designed right over, now. Yeah. Why don't you why don't you get yourself some hot shot designer out of NYU Fashion Institute mm-hmm. and let him revamp some stuff and and get that young, younger demographic. You know, it's designer driven and it's press releases about who your new designer is and it's their mm-hmm. lifestyle and you know, that sort of thing. But what about like getting, like you know, have you read the thing how Kanye finds his designers? Like there's one school that he goes to and. Yeah, that's my college. <laughs> that's where I went. <laughs> so yeah. if you're an um, alumni, yeah, why don't cool. you go back and find yourself the, the top of the class yeah. and pay him to come in and yep. revamp it. Re, reimagine yeah, I mean, it. I love it. This this kind of invigorates me. I mean, this definitely invigorates me a little bit to to jump back into this. I uh, I, I worry a little bit that when Grandpa comes in and tries to buy his old shoes, we're going to scare him away. But I think we got to find a different sales channel altogether. I think you op- just they, go after you it. You roll that off as another company. I think so. I mean, there's there's yeah, a there's so. a reason why there there's. Yeah, I just I think there's a reason why Nike's so successful and your your sneaker whatever the performance side is, the younger demographic is a different brand. You got to name it something right. else. But you have the infrastructure so. to launch it. And it doesn't mean you yeah, can't sell them in that store. You can cut the stores in half. Right. You know, we just hired the uh he starts the 1st of November, the head engineer for Y3. So <laughs> I'm why, on the, we're on the right why, path. Why we're are on. you doing that? Now, now the Y three stuff's gonna. Because, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. So the no, head, the head yeah, engineer they'll, they'll of Y three. Yeah, developer, uh, material developer, engineer for Y three. Yeah. Well, I I don't know if you're a fan of Y three, but they're definitely whatever he was doing, he was pushing the envelope, like mm-hmm. clothes and Absolutely. shoes. And why don't you go into why yep. don't you go into clothes for the comfort? crowd uh you know and i i i wrap my head around what is comfort today you know comforts netflix and chips what are the terms of what's comfortable right like what does that even mean and this company did such a great job in the 70s of saying hey you know there's no internet we're the only store in town they invested their money having a place where you come in and get a shoe for the wedding or the, whatever you were cutting the grass whatever you had and they carried Chris, it's insane. I'm telling you, I've never seen anything like this in my life. Where they, the customer just comes in, sits down, wants the same damn thing. If we could catch that same kind of thing, the same way, you know, I was at Converse when the purchase, and I watched that process all over again. They're going to carry that truck person right into the grave. Um, but that's not that's scalable. That's the revamp I'm trying to do. That's not scalable. No. And it's Cadillac. Right. That's what killed Cadillac. Is their yep, customers were exactly dying what I'm every looking day, at. right? And so yep. you got to go young, and then go wide, go wide with the comfort, and niche it, and then go start another brand and go young, and literally cut the stores in it. half if that's what you have to do. There's no reason you can't do that. If you already have Take the, the leases, just literally cut them in half. But when you said the the head engineer from Y3, I mean he's making clothes, and their clothes match the shoes, and so. There's an automatic. Right. He would probably understand that more than I. Oh, yeah. would. I would lo- oh God, I'd love to have lunch with him and pick his brain because it's genius yeah. what they did. And it's you know it's genius is how Adidas gives them the leeway to do what they want. Mm-hmm. Like Rick Owens too. Like the Rick Owens stuff. Like I'm wearing these Rick Owens boots right now. They're just insane. Like it's just insane what what how Adidas lets Kanye and and Yoshi do what they want to do but still controls it enough that they can mass, um, you know, mass produce it. Yeah. On average, if you're going to open a full size run of tooling, I'm not sure the numbers on the Rick Owens or the Y3, if it's, if it's a break even or whatnot, but if you just see that, I say, you know what, as long as our name is attached to this Y3 or this Rick Owens, we're going to sell a lot more barbecue shoes to dad if we're cooler. You know, they'll push a lot more Stan Smith to push a lot more basics. Oh, just the traffic so, uh, they I, get to their website for Yeezy and all that. Totally. I mean, if you go to it, they'll have a little Yeezy stuff on there, but not really only enough to get you there. And then they're trying to sell you the other stuff. 
it's just traffic like it's a great traffic yeah. builder and it's you know it's yeah, in the news one it's thing hype. we don't have no that's what i'd go hire that designer that can can do that streetwear thing there's so much money in that but that yeah. i would love i'd love to hear you know what what you come up with and how you engineer this it sounds like fun this is the kind of stuff that i live for i, I wish i could trade places with you yeah uh, I get addicted, you know what? I get it's, addicted it's, to the fix. Well, I'll be happy to share any of this with you. Um, offline, I'll, I'll send you what we're doing, or uh, if you ever want to check it out. Um, factory tours, the whole thing. There's, there's, there's a couple. There's a couple hurdles I'm looking at with Made in America, but um, not not quite as easy. I, I think our Y3 friend that's joining is going to find out. Not quite as easy to separate across all of Chinese and Vietnam, and you know. No, you're, ass, you're handcuffing technologies, but you're handcuffing yeah, him a lot. Is. But get Trump to wear wear a pair of those old ones, whatever the brand is. Exactly. Made in exactly. America, because I don't think Made in America mm-hmm. matters that much either. I don't. I'm with you. I'm with you. You know, I, I'm looking. I'm looking forward to revamping this brand. I think it's a great opportunity. It's something I just wanted. You know, the feather in my hat and. uh Hey, would the owners, I got another idea. Would the owners be upset if the other brand you start wasn't made in America? They originally, see, you know, I'm three months in, so I'm kind of like sitting back, figuring out what all the machinery we have, what our capacity is. I, I'm still, you know, working out all operations, figuring out design budgets, all of that. But I'm looking at the history, and they dabbled before with the current brand in different countries. Now, I know we make some shoes in Italy because they, I'm not, I, I think it's just a pet project for them. They have a friend there. Um, trip to Mexico this weekend to check out some factories in Lyon. That's sort of my backyard, you know, my, my past. And the new brand, I mean, they have a couple in the store that they've tried at the lower end with sandals. They weren't very successful. So I don't know if it's a, um, I would say that this this entire company, and I'm sure you have friends like this, this is a hobby for this family. So as much as it means to me, it may mean <laughs> significantly less uh, to them in making these kind of moves. But um, I, I think it could be a go. I think if, if, if it's worded correctly and the opportunity is there and it you know keeps the initial brand image safe to them and sacred, I think it would be okay. Yeah, that might be the that might be the move is just start another brand for that. And yeah, then just go, I like it. Go That's a great old, idea. Go old with the other one and go young with the new one. Mm-hmm. I like it. Awesome. awesome, Jesse. Well, thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, Please hit me offline. I'd, oh, I'd thank be curious. you. Yeah, that would be awesome. Um, I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye. Thank you very much for your time.